Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Amen. But it's central to a catechumen, to a confirmand, 13 or 14 year old, boy or girl, in this case, boy. Well, there are visible signs what, a, what is central at confirmation, which is not just a day, but, but it, it's, a, it's a process that leads to a day and then a process that follows the confession of the one true faith from God. But, you know, what, what is central to that one true faith, that confession of faith? Well, I, I see a candle. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The, the, the cross of Christ is central. The Holy Spirit on Maxwell's banner brings him Christ in word and sacrament. He's wearing a white robe, not because of his own purity, but because of the purity of God's Son, whose righteousness alone saves us and makes us holy, or called saints, part of God's family. And then there, there's the altar, the, the bread and the wine, and Max's first communion. So I see many things, you know, the body and blood of Jesus. So Jesus is central. But normally, what are 13 and 14 year olds, you know, thinking about? So uh, I'll just ask you to think back when you were 13 and 14. What was always on your mind? So now you're grieving for all of the youth of in today's world uh, as you think what were you focused on uh, we didn't have smartphones or ipads or, or computers or laptops uh, we had telephones uh, we passed notes in class all right dear or wrote a note passed it in class that's how we communicated we still wanted to uh, steal a kiss from our first girlfriend or or vice versa, a girl with, with a boy that she likes. Uh, we're thinking, um, you know, what's for dinner? Uh, we're, we're thinking, um, who has sent me a, a new message today uh, in today's world, a new text or a new um, form of whatever you kids use to communicate. So life in the wonder years, as they call it on TV, preteen and teenage years, will always probably be the same, but will always need what Maxwell has been given and what most of us have been given, some sort of anchor, some sort of foundation, something to build our lives upon something from the distant past and something from the immediate or distant future. And that's Jesus Christ our Lord. This is what St. John saw in the revelation of the church. Uh, one of the angels, he, he writes in Revelation 21, came to me and said, come, I will show you the bride of the Lamb. You know, that would, be, that would be us, the church of God, the city of God. You know, and he carried me away in the Holy Spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God. Its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had great high walls with 12 gates, and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, three on the west. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So it's the foundation of heaven. 12 gates are 12 tribes of Israel, the, the Old Testament. The promise of the Christ, the history and ancestry of Jesus Christ. And what are what's the foundation of the church? The apostles of Christ, the New Testament. 
And it's upon those same foundations. You're looking at the past, you're looking at the present and future. It's that same foundation that we want for our kids. And, and of course, for the church. John says, I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain standing in the center of the throne. So what's the center of the church? You could say lamb of God, and I would say, so what? You could say, well, lamb equals love. That's the center of the church. God is love. Christ is love. The sacrificial lamb is love. God loves us, and though we are sinners, God did something to reunite us with himself. In the past, in the present, and for the future. Note that Jesus appears as that lamb who had once been slain. Reminds me of the crucifixion. Jesus does not appear in the church as a warrior. You know, he could. A soldier. A bully. He doesn't preach misogynist, anti-women messages, feminist, anti-male messages. He's not a dictator, a banker, a politician, a preacher, a coach, a financial advisor, a tax lawyer, or even a king. He's the lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lamb equals love. So the church is well grounded on both the Old and New Testaments. And the Lamb is at, it should be at the center. I mean, what kind of church would it be if we move the goalposts every month or every Sunday? What kind of church would it be if we stuck our finger up in the air, licked it once, and found out where are the societal winds blowing? And just not that the present isn't important, it is, and we must address it, but we cannot change according to what we think society wants to hear. We must address what society needs to hear in the present time by being well-grounded and not a shifting sand and, and changing our minds on all manner of human life, human sin, and heaven itself. So the Holy Christian Church is not grounded on what everything else seems to be in our country, emotion, opinion, or money, or sin, but on the eternal word of God. God loves children, that's why he wants us to make them well-grounded. A well-grounded child is disciplined, and what discipline is, is it's love tempered with forgiveness. That's what it is. It's tough love tempered with forgiveness, with mercy. So the goal is always love and, and, and coming back. Um, our kids uh, learn then what it is to come back to when life um, throws them a curveball. So nothing new is happening today. Uh, Maxwell has known Jesus since infancy, since his holy baptism. And then he's been taught in Jesus, but now can better confess what Christianity is all about. It's true what Martin Luther said, no one can call himself a Christian if he doesn't know six things about God. And I was gonna ask you to name the six things, but that's a lot of pressure. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ten Commandments. Was Lord's Prayer part of Lord's Prayer. Uh, keys, and keys and Confession. Um, so what other creed? Apostles' Creed. Apostles' Creed. Yeah, but Apostles' Creed especially. Um, I guess I have four. Hmm. 
Hmm? Baptism and yeah, so those are six things you're supposed to know if you want to say I'm a Christian about God. Those six things. Okay? They're simple, but they're not easy, right? <laughs> they're the simple things, but they're not easy. So what our kids are taught is nothing new, but it is life renewing. It's not just about the past, but about the future. It's not from a fleeting online course, which will be outmoded in a few hours, but from the book of life, eternal life. It is what they have had in their hearts, but now it's on their lips and in their lives of service. It is the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation in the sacrament. It's for second chances. It's for hope for the future. It's for hope when you fail, and it's for humility when you succeed in life. And for a part of the reason for all of these blessings is because Christ is to be the center, the lamb is the center of the church, the child, and also the caregiver or parent. To be focused on Jesus Christ. So we can feed them, we can educate them, we can buy toys, we can um, dote on them. But unless we baptize them and instruct them and focus their hearts on God, they will not attain the one goal we caregivers or parents have for our kids, which is that they go to heaven and be with God forever. Because everything else is a distant second place. That's mostly what we want for our kids, that, that, they, that they live in heaven with God. And what we want is for a kid to say, you know, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, I love you so much, but I love someone better than you. It's Jesus Christ. And that, that makes every parent just the happiest caregiver in the world. We did our job. So though central in heaven and earth, the lamb is not central in Max's culture or mine. Each one of the six chief parts he, he confesses will be challenged, will be dismissed, will be marginalized, will be attacked. Jesus promised, you know, through, through trouble, in this world you will have trouble. I have told you these things so that you may have peace. But take heart when trouble comes. I have overcome the world. So sometimes we worry about the future of the church because we're worried about the kids who are coming behind us or the stupidity of our own present age. So we worry a little bit. Jesus says, well, there's going to be trouble. Take heart. I have overcome the world, and so will you and your children. He calls us the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So that wherever we travel and live, we're a blessing to the people around us, whether they believe in God or not. And don't worry so much if you feel outnumbered by those who would persecute or hate your Christ or your Christian church or confession. For as for the saints and angels and the believers and worshipers of the one true God, there are more of us than there are of the wicked. St. John's Revelation and this sermon in this way. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Amen. And the created me is on page 20 of Common Service. You may stand. <laughs> 